In lab 7, our goal was to use the principles of physics to observe that of the motion of a star in order to determine the mass of a black hole. To accomplish our goal of finding the mass of a black hole, we use the principles of momentum, motion along a curve, and gravitational force. We assume in our model that the gravitational force of the black hole is the only force acting on the star. When we graph the x and y coordinates of the star's motion against each other, we can see that the motion of the star resembles the arc of an ellipse. We know that for objects to change direction, they must have a net force acting on them in a different direction from the direction of their momentum. Objects in circular motion tend to have a force acting on them in a direction perpendicular to their momentum, causing them to constantly change direction without increasing in speed. We know that a perpendicular component to the force acting on the star must be present in order to cause it to move in a curving motion. But since the star does not move in a perfectly circular trajectory, we can't directly model the motion of the star using the principles of circular motion. But since we have raw data of the star's movement, we can calculate its velocity based on its changing position over time. Then, using the relationship p equals mv or momentum equals mass times velocity, we can calculate the momentum of the star at each time step. In order to calculate the change in momentum for a time step, we can just subtract the momentum of the last time step from the current momentum. And so, finally, using the momentum principle, delta p is equal to force times delta t, we can calculate the vector of the net force acting on the star as its changing momentum over the changing time, or dp dt. Newton's law of gravitation states that the force of gravity is equal to g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. We can solve the equation for the mass of the black hole, which gets us m2 is equal to force of gravity times r squared divided by m1 times g. Since we know that the net force acting on the star is the gravitational force, we can get the gravitational force value from the calculated net force acting on the star. G is the universal gravitational constant with the value 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. The mass of the star is known, and all the distance from the star to the black hole can be calculated using the difference in position vectors between the star and the black hole. And the position of the black hole is given in the initial data, so we should be able to solve for the mass of the black hole after calculating the net force. To visualize the motion of the star and simplify calculations, we created a model in vPython which loads the data for the movement of the star and calculates the velocity, momentum, changing momentum, and net force of the star at each time step. For the purpose of this model, delta t, the time step is set to 84,400 seconds, or one day in seconds. The mass of the star is set to 1.989 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And the position of the black hole has an x value of 5 times 10 to the 10 meters and a y value of negative 4 times 10 to the 10 meters based on given values. When we run our simulation, those three arrows represent the direction of three different vectors related to the star's motion. The black arrow represents the net force acting on the ball. The blue arrow represents the component of the force parallel to the momentum of the star and the red arrow represents the perpendicular force. Notably, if we recall the momentum principle, we recall that the net force is equivalent to dp dt, or the change in momentum over the changing time. This also means that the parallel component of dp dt is equivalent to the parallel component of net force, and likewise, the perpendicular component is equivalent to the perpendicular component of net force. After running our simulation, we find that the mass of the black hole is 2.586 times 10 to the 31 kilograms. But more significantly, our procedure shows that forces can be calculated using staggered motion data, and if we know the sources of those forces, we can use knowledge of those forces to calculate other values like the mass of a black hole. We can also consider a what-if scenario where the motion of the star remained exactly the same but the mass of the black hole changed. If the motion of the star remained the same, there would be no way for us to calculate a different mass of black hole because the mass of the black hole in the procedure was calculated using only the motion data and set initial values. The situation where the mass of the black hole is changed without a change in motion or the other values of the system is impossible because there's only one possible mass of the black hole at this particular location that produces this particular set of motions with this particular star. 
The result of this void if situation is consistent with the result that the mass can be determined from only the position of the star over time, the position of the black hole, and the mass of the star. After all, if different masses of black holes could produce the same set of given data values, we wouldn't be able to confirm the dependency of the mass of the black hole on our given data values.